Oh my goodness, look at this mess. How you folks doing? I'm getting ready to uh, paint the SL350. And as you can see, I'm stripping off all the old material from the original paint job. And it's kind of sad because actually the original paint job was like pretty good. But still, you know, it's going to be better in the end. We're going to have a... a uh, a motorcycle that is historically significant in the hands of somebody that's really going to appreciate it. I just wanted to give this little caption here. I've got the tank in, or the, the, the fuel tank uh, on my bench and the side covers in my paint booth. And this is the stuff I needed to strip off. And this is the last of what I need to do to uh, uh, replicate that uh, topaz orange paint job. You can see that uh, if you watch previous videos, that this is my vat of stripper and I'm taking all the material off and this is how we do this. Everything down to bare metal and then back to uh, as original as we can make it. Talk to you soon. Hey everybody, I'm back with you on the SL350 restoration project. I've completed the paint on the headlight bucket, rear fender, the two side covers, and the front fork or, or front fender bracket. But uh, just as I was completing those items and I was going to do the front fender as well, I ran out of a reducer. And so I had to stop at the front fender. I generally always make the gas tank a separate project because this has painted stripes on it. And uh, that it gets a little bit more involved but it's okay because uh, I always make it two projects so in case I have something like a fender that couldn't take its last coat I can always add that in to the tank project and then it doesn't get so complicated if you do the parts in a couple different phases it's much easier on you because that way you can really concentrate on just a few parts and get them as good as you can possibly get them and then move on to the next part. So I advocate doing the project in two separate little painting projects so you can uh, apply as much detail as possible and as much focus as possible without uh, getting burdened down by trying to meet the time frames that I have to do with painting. Okay, So I have to, uh, you, you can see that the gas tank is already primed. And just a couple really minor uh, uh, hints on body work and priming and such is that your eyes work very very well but your touch is much more sensitive I'm running my hands over this gas tank and I'm trying to feel for any imperfections in it and believe me if there's any imperfections in it any deviations in that surface your fingers will feel them a lot sooner than your eyes can actually see them now, I've already done the work on this gas tank. I had a couple flaws in it. I took them out. I used a filler primer and then sanded down that filler primer and this is ready for the next coat. The SL350s from this era all had the same type of paint that we have to replicate. First is the primer coat and it's sanded and ready for uh, the silver base coat. Over the silver base coat for this particular one, goes the topaz orange candy coat. Over this, after I do one more coat of orange, will go four to five coats of clear. And then after it's cleared, if there's any imperfections, we nib them out is what I call it, polish it out, and then it's ready to put on the motorcycle. I didn't know if I was going to show you anything about paint because I just thought, okay, paint's paint. But the reality of it is, is that paint is complicated and it's best done by people who paint all the time. And so if you can get, if you can buddy up with a painter, somebody that is well qualified and does this stuff every day, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Uh, it is complicated. It does take some technique and it takes some very expensive equipment. Like I've manufactured a spray booth for myself uh, that has vents in it and an extraordinary amount of lights in it. And um, it, most people don't have those, those things inside their garages so they can do this themselves. 
Along with that, I have a heater system in here, a watering system so I can actually uh, uh, wet sand parts and stuff, and I can control the humidity. You can't do that in your garage, and if you want to get the best job possible, I recommend finding yourself a really reputable painter. Okay? Most people think that, oh, I'm going to spend a couple hundred bucks and have my motorcycle painted. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to tell you right now that the materials alone to paint this SL350 were about $400. Right? That's with primer and sanders and paper towels and lacquer thinner that we use to clean the gun. And then all of the other materials, which is the base coat silver, the tangerine coat, which is the orange, and then the clear coat after that, we're looking at $400 in just materials. So when somebody quotes you that they're going to charge you, and then there's another one too, is, is, that, is that the white stripe is painted. That I wanted to get to that too. And so that's why the tank's a separate, separate pay job. So when somebody quotes you $1,000 to $1,200 to paint your SL350, don't be surprised. All right. I'm going to finish this up, and I'll take pictures of the finished product. But um, uh, we're just—I'm I'm ready right now to shoot the silver on the tank, and then after I shoot the silver, then I'll put um, one more coat on orange coat on the fender, a couple orange coats on the tank, get it up to uh, the, the the proper depth of orange. Then we let the orange cure. And then I mask off for the stripes, add the white stripe, and then I do the clear coat over the white stripe. That's it for me for now, and I will check with you folks later.